And welcome to the Jesus King podcast. It's awesome to be with you guys and welcome to you all. Um, it's actually an interesting one today because it's the first episode that I'm going to be with Emil. That's right. The two of us. So we've all, we've each been with Martin. Yep. Um, but not together. So it'll be a yeah. cool one. And we have some interesting um, things to discuss in regards to um, what I think is a pretty prominent um, issue in yes. the church today. Absolutely. Not just in the church, even with um, a lot of the young people today. And it's centered around Eastern spirituality. And yeah. I think that's a um, it's an interesting thing to discuss. And I know we've both been... Um, kind of researching and thinking about these things. Yeah. Um, I want to turn it over to you and just ask you one thing. Why do you think this is an issue right now? I think because it's so pervasive and uh, how it kind of masks itself to be compatible with Christianity mm. in terms of being um, kind of like selfless and more in tune to your spirit and mm. to the universe and, you know, being kind of less of you, more of the outside influence. Um, so I think it it masks itself as something that's compatible when it really isn't, and um, and I think that's where the danger is. So you're saying like it masks itself as being something <laughs> spiritual, something mm -hmm. good, mm -hmm. but there's something underlying that you it's would say not, is not of God. Yeah, yeah. I, absolutely. I, I think it's um, it masks itself as something that can edify you mm. spiritually, where it seems kind of spiritually deficient it's it, it just leaves you blank yeah yeah, yeah. it's interesting because i remember i went to a um private school it was a christian school mm -hmm. and um we did religions religious studies so mm -hmm. studies of religion and we did some of the major ones we did judaism we did mm -hmm. um islam and we did buddhism and hinduism yeah so you know covering the major <clears throat> religions and when we went into the uh, module for Eastern spirituality. So yep. Hinduism, Confucianism, Buddhism, those kind of Eastern spiritualities. Yep. It kind of, I noticed how it drew the attention of everyone in the class, more mm. so than any of the others, because there's something about it that is, I don't, you know, I'll use this as a, as a term, um, seductive, you know, yeah. spiritually seductive. It draws them in because it has this, ideal or it has this appearance of something that is really deep and profound yeah but when you dig deep into it mm -hmm. you realize that there's something um there's something spiritually as you said deficient and even i would say demonic like there's there, yeah. there is something that like any other false religion like any other religion as believers as christians we say it is not of the kingdom of light. It's of the kingdom yeah. of darkness. Um, but in saying that as well, we actually took a trip to the Nantian Temple, which is down in Wollongong. It, mm -hmm. So it's a Buddhist temple. I've been there. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so we did a tour. We had the tour guide. And he was trying to convince and persuade us of how compatible Christianity and Buddhism were. Mm -hmm. Basically saying they're one and the same, just with two different roots. Yeah. And they have this idea that even, you know, Jesus went and studied the Buddhist and um, Eastern teachings for, yes. you know, 20 years. And I've heard they that, have, yes. They have those I've, conspiracies I've one, yeah. and those theories, which has no root in um, yeah. history whatsoever. No. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but there's a danger in that because we're seeing a lot of this syncretism. And so we're mm -hmm. seeing in the church today, we're seeing that even pastors, preachers, teachers... They're trying to mesh in and merge in these two philosophies. Yeah. Right? Because Christianity, obviously, it's a religion. <clears throat> it's a spirituality. Mm -hmm. But there is a philosophical element in that we... It, philosophy means mm -hmm. the, the study of wisdom, the study yes. of truth, right? There is a wisdom in Christianity that is based on the tenets that God has revealed yeah. in the scriptures. Buddhism, Hinduism, Confucianism... Sikhism, all of these Eastern spiritualities are based on a philosophy that is rooted in a certain culture and a culture that's been prominent and for thousands of years. Yeah. Right. So they kind of consider Hinduism the oldest religion on earth. I, yeah. I debate that because, you know, the true and pure religion is that which stems from, you know, the Garden of Eden. Yeah. But, um, but in saying that we have um, two of the bigger ones, so Buddhism and Hinduism. Mm -hmm. 
that are kind of pretty prevalent right now. Um, what are your thoughts in regards to why they are popular and how that is affecting people today? Why they are popular? Well, yeah. mainly because of how widespread they were mm. and how um, and how many people there are that actually follow that religion. I mean, if you look at um, India, for example, mm. um, it's, it's a very large population and you have many, many people in India that are Hindus. Yeah. Um, and also in Hinduism, the whole idea is everyone has a different path to God. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, God, in the, in the term when I say God, I mean the Godhead. Uh, I don't mean the the minor gods that they have, yeah. but the ma yeah. the major Godhead, which is beyond their comprehension. Even they say to for us to even try to speak of Him yeah. would would be inaccurate because He is beyond our comprehension as human beings. That's the idea of yeah. the main Godhead, yeah. uh, who's beyond human comprehension. So there's no even point trying to explain mm -hmm. what He is. And it's pretty interesting when, when you look into it. But um, pretty much the reason why it's so widespread is everyone has their own path to a deity, their own path to the truth. So it seems like you can't go wrong right. to a certain yeah. extent, to a certain extent. So basically it's saying <clears throat> that whatever religion you come from, whatever belief you have, mm -hmm. it can be incorporated into... It's part of a truth. Yeah, it's part of the truth. So a truth. It, it's yeah. it's kind of like you know the the human brain which has all these different neurons and neural mm -hmm. pathways that all work to towards the same goal kind yes. of thing. Yeah. yeah, they're all connected to the main God because yeah. He is beyond beyond uh, creation. So mm -hmm. He's uh, there is a Creator God and He is even above that because mm -hmm. He's something that's beyond creation. It's something that's entirely out of our thoughts, out, okay. entirely out of, out of something we can ex even explain or yeah. begin to explain. Yeah. So there's really no point trying to even explain it because you'd just be creating inaccuracies. Right. So um, you have the infinite, which is the Godhead. Yeah. Or, you know, in Buddhism, they call it the... Or in Hinduism as well. And the Eastern um, spiritualities, they have the phrase universal consciousness. Yeah, or the Tao, yeah. or whatever or you want to call it. Yeah. yeah. And so they they view that as this is God, this is the infinite, mm -hmm. you are finite, and you are working your way towards becoming enmeshed and joined to mm. that universal consciousness yes that, that's that's the ultimate goal we strive for is to mm. find the truth and to be part of it and there's even the confucius saying which is very popular which is if in the morning i find the Tao or the 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 true way mm. in the evening i can die without regrets yeah 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 and so all right i we're talking about popularity i just want to clarify mm. that and kind of target it more it's obvious that it would be popular in a certain culture mm. that is centered around it yeah, we're in a Western culture which is built on the principles of logic from the Greek side, so Greeks, yeah. Romans, and even the Christian influence here. Why is that now permeating our culture here? Why do you think young people who have come from a a place of logic and they've we've built our societies here? Why are we who we have so much? Um, treasure and riches in the christian world in the christian faith why are we being attracted to that because we see injustice in our life mm -hmm. because we as humans um in the western country see the injustice in our justice system mm -hmm. we see that we are not created equal we are we are um born into different families into different poverty levels and mm -hmm. some people are born into a rich family with um, healthy bodies some are born into poor families with unfortunately unhealthy bodies and and there's no pretty much um it doesn't seem fair so people try to find a way to explain that unfairness and try to find fairness in the world and that's where karma comes in that's where everything it makes you feel safe it makes yeah. you feel like there is some sort of cosmic justice out there yeah yeah and yeah. They don't find that in their day-to-day -day life. So they, they, they're they yearning for justice. Mm -hmm. They're yearning for something that makes sense. And look, that's in our nature. That's yeah. We try to find, you know, order in disorder. And, and, and unfortunately for many, they're misled into believing that this is the correct way. The Eastern, mm -hmm. um, you know, spirituality is the correct way. And because it's enticing, it, it makes you feel like it's very neutral. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's not 
it's not black or white it's kind of a gray yeah and gray is a lot incorporated ex- in any, into whatever any, you want yeah. into your own lifestyle it's very pliable yeah it's yeah. very easy going mm. and that that's where the seduction comes into is just especially with buddhism buddhism takes it, it takes that form a lot 100%. more than the others yeah because in hinduism there's there are class systems and mm. and based on how you've lived your life you will be reborn into a certain class yes. so there's humans at the top then animals and keep going further um but yeah so there are classes and even in humans there are classes but um but yeah in like you said um in buddhism mm-hmm. it's a bit more it's a bit more different yeah it's different in that it's more relatable to outsiders people that are outside yep. of the eastern system mm-hmm. because buddhism teaches that you know it's for all people it so is. whereas yeah. hinduism kind of is restricted to a certain class as you said you had the class system which siddhartha gautama who is you know the buddha classified the buddha yeah he um he revolted against that system um because of the injustices he saw and he didn't Suffering, he didn't so, yeah. he didn't enjoy the the class system in that sense once he was exposed to it mm-hmm. so there's a certain nobility to it but he took a different turn yeah and what I, what I was kind of targeting with the question about the West, why the West has so easily embraced it. Mm. We've come from a place where because of our logic and in Christianity, we had we had strength in the ideas of God, the Godhead, the plans of God, the purposes of God, the infinite God revealing himself to our nation mm-hmm. through history. Right. We're not just talking about Australia or America, but the church in general, that God is very real in intervening in, in history. Yes. But in the last hundred years, hundred of years or so, and we're going to probably talk about this in the, the next um, episode where we're going to talk about politics. Yeah. Our political stream and our cultural stream has moved more towards the secular. Yeah. And more towards a naturalistic worldview. Mm-hmm. So a naturalistic worldview meaning... We're removing all sense of spirituality and we're just going yeah. to become purely scientific. True. Young people who are looking for a sense of belonging and they're looking for a sense of identity and they're looking for a sense of something beyond themselves. If they're just going to be identified as, you know, a cerebral ball of neurons and chemicals and that's all you are and you're just stardust. They they feel trepidation at that. They they, mm-hmm. they go through an existential crisis, crisis yeah. so to, so to speak. They don't want to think that this is all there is. And I would say that Buddhism and Hinduism, as or you know, Eastern spiritualities, even um, Jainism and Confucianism, which it's actually spreading across the board too. Mm-hmm. It gives them a sense of oh well, this is actually something I can look at as being something beyond me mm-hmm. to remove myself from this cycle of pain and and toil and yeah. and anguish right because i believe that as the church we've stopped in our mission to the to the full extent what we should be doing we've stopped in moving ourselves with the gospel to the younger generation mm. and so they're looking elsewhere yeah. they're looking for answers anywhere else yeah um, and so I do see that that's one of the issues. We've gone secular, we've gone naturalistic, and now they're like, we need something more. We need something. We spiritual. left the cavity, and it needs to be filled. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And, and that was one of my my thoughts a while back when when I was a teenager, looking at um, Eastern spiritualities. I was thinking, have we really failed our generation? Yeah. As believers, as the church, have we really failed in teaching them that there is something beyond us? That it, the kingdom of God is not of this world. The kingdom of God is something that permeates this world, permeates our lives, and it is for all people. And we mm-hmm. can give them something real as an anchor for their soul, right? Um, obviously, you know, I'm broad brushing it. And we do factor in as well the flesh and the fact that you know, people are drawn to the desires of their own hearts, but I think that is a major factor. Mm. What do you think? I agree, and because um, you, you you talked about the different, because how you said the the one of the was it the monk that came to you in the Buddhist temple? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and how he yeah. told you like Buddhism and Christianity is similar. It's compatible. Yeah. It's compatible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let's kind of look into it because mm. I've heard that as well. Like, yeah. oh, it's very compatible. Like Buddha teaches us to for us to end suffering. Mm. 
uh, we, they ha we have to kind of reduce our self, sense of self. Yep. So less of us and more of the universe and just being one with the universe and kind of having no um, passion for materialistic things. And that's, and that's the start of reaching Nirvana, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and eventually even Nirvana itself, you don't even strive for it. And that's when you so, actually get to Nirvana. Just, um, mm. clarification. There's some people that might not know what Nirvana is. Okay. So Nirvana is the Eastern spirituality is <coughs> equivalent to what a Christian would say heaven is. Yeah. In a sense. In a sense. But yeah. Nirvana, literally the word Nirvana means it's a state of nothingness. Yes. It is. You are rid of your identity, you are rid of your ego, you are rid of your desires, you are rid of all things. You are no one. You are no one. So you're thrown <coughs> into this cosmic sea of nothingness. Mm -hmm. And that's the goal. That's the goal of Buddhism, that's the goal of Hinduism, that's the goal of the Eastern spiritualities. So this whole process of reincarnation and karma weighing up the you know good energy bad energy uh consequences and rewards and all that the ultimate goal is to come into this state of nothingness which is you're beyond the karma and the yeah. cycle that's where buddha believed he reached which was he's no longer tied to that cycle he's yeah. he's nothing he's no one how can no one be, be in the cycle of um rebirth yeah it doesn't make sense it, you, it's not possible and yeah. that's what he was striving for now that's the buddhist an mm -hmm. Eastern view of yes. it. The Christian view is that suffering also is not the ultimate plan of God for us. Absolutely. Right. And one day suffering, sin, death, toil, hardships will all well, be removed mm -hmm. and we will end up in paradise. Yep. So what's the difference here? Well, here's the difference. Buddha says, this is the way. Jesus says, I am the way. Mm -hmm. This is the major difference. Buddha is trying to point us towards a way where we can just lose our sense of self. Mm -hmm. But now that we left with nothing. Yeah. We left with no one. An emptiness. An emptiness. Yeah. Where Jesus says we have to we need that emptiness, but we replace that with him. Mm -hmm. Right? Because as a human, we can't just be a husk, a shell, walking aimlessly. Because it is aimless. If you there's no self, then what's the point of existence? It's just mm -hmm. to exist. Um, or to spread that existence of non-existence it, it it doesn't make sense it just it seems there's no order to it it just yeah. seems kind of pointless well we talk about the idea of emptiness right <clears throat> the bible is dead set um in its teachings against it's antithetical to that idea mm -hmm. emptiness is dangerous yeah right we're not talking about being empty we're talking about being filled with the spirit yes. right so we are not denying our identities. No, no, no. We no. are being transformed by Christ to come to the identity yeah. that He has designed for us. It's it's our desires mm. that we like our physical, um, for example, um, fasting. For example, our main goal as humans, our main, it's imprinted in us is survival, mm -hmm. is sustainability, uh, sustaining our life, sustaining yeah. our health. Eating is part of that. Ultimately, everything we do is for food. Yeah. It's, you know subconsciously it's a basic we, human it's a basic, it's a basic human, human need and and that's what we strive for so for you to deny that very basic need is illogical yeah right yeah can you think of another reason for it unless it's medically necessary mm. it's illogical like you're taking away sustenance when you need it mm. um if you don't need it and the doctor's saying no less of it, that's different but if you need it and you're just taking away from it what's the reason for it it's so, it so this is this is where we talk about that mm. as well because Hinduism and Buddhism have fasting as well. Mm -hmm. Christianity do. has fasting. Mm -hmm. But the goal is very different. Absolutely. Because the goal of Christianity and fasting is what? To draw near to? God. God. The goal of Buddhist fasting or Eastern it's fasting to deny yourself. is to deny yourself and to become nothing. Nothing. Yeah. Right? That's what Buddha was doing. Yeah. Um, the original Buddha. It's one of the main stories. Mm. It's not the story. It's because there's many of them. But one of them was that he was um, he was one of the monks that would just walk around without food and yeah. he wouldn't even ask for food. He would just rely on people, you yeah. know. And at that time, people were very generous and yeah, yeah. they would give to part the of monks. That culture. It was part of the culture. Yeah. Now he'd probably starve to death. But um, <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah. So and he was so hungry at one point that yeah. he he kind of just pushed through and found the birdie tree where he yeah. sat under, and that's where he 
That's where he said, yeah. Yeah, that's where he gained um, a state life. of nothingness. Yeah. 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 Um, so I think, I think that he was striving for nothingness mm-hmm. where we have to strive for everything. Everything. Which is, which is God. I mean, our, our <clears throat> tenet, the fundamental, fundamental tenet of Christian philosophy and of spirituality is we are designed to be in relationship with god yes we are designed to be in fellowship with him we are designed like our fulfillment in our identity our fulfillment and our purpose is found that's the chief end of men yes. is found in knowing and loving and being in fellowship with god yeah. yes that's why jesus came yes john 17 5 he's like this is the reason i am here i am here that they may know the one true god and be one yes. with him all right now there's an element of denial. We deny our flesh. Mm-hmm. Now, by denial of flesh, we mean the denial of the things that draw us away from, from God. God. Yes, but that's not denial of all things physical because we live our in a physical ones, world. Right? Our loved ones, our our yeah. basic needs, are to an extent. Yeah. Um, sometimes we do that as a sacrifice to God. Yeah. Um, yeah. not to the point where it's too dangerous, but just to the point where it's. Where we're reprioritizing. Yeah, we're numbers. showing God that He's our priority and not us. And it helps us, yeah. you know, become closer to God. And it, it kind of gives um, our, us the sense of our priorities. Yeah. Um, but Kind the, of like it's like a recalibration yeah. when, you, when you're fasting, yeah, when you're praying. Yeah, it is. When you're doing these things, you're, you're, you're realizing, yes, we live in a physical world, but mm-hmm. ultimately our goal is for the world that, it comes yeah. from this it's w- after it's what are we um investing in really yeah yeah and uh just to summarize it's just buddha was striving and putting all his effort into nothing yeah right yeah. all that work all that it's everything was nothing, for yeah. nothing yeah um literally and um to gain that state of nothingness whereas for us we have to put our passion and our desires and everything not into our physical needs and wants yeah but rather what God wants. Yeah, and I want to I want to kind of touch quickly. Like mm-hmm. we're, we're coming to to the end, but I want to mm-hmm. touch on there's certain practices. Like for example, there are Christians who incorporate yoga mm. into their their lives. They yeah. incorporate yoga into their daily morning routines, yeah. and they say, "Oh, I love Jesus, and I'm doing yoga or meditation as well." Like uh, like I, Buddhist I, meditation. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah? I was gonna right? say I, I meditate on the Bible. I meditate yeah, no, in prayer. Well, yeah. Meditation is a word, right? Yes. Buddhist meditation is it's a different. Concept, it's right? a concept. Yes. Meditation means to reflect your mind upon something. Something. Right? When we meditate on the Word of God in prayer, we are focusing our minds on what God has revealed to us in His mm-hmm. Word. But Buddhist or Eastern meditation is very different because, like you said, the end goal is nothingness. Mm. You are emptying your mind. the The Word of God talks about renewing your mind, mm. right? Romans twelve, not verse one to two, yeah. right? You're saying, "Well, you're not to be conformed to this world. We are supposed to be transformed by the Spirit, renewing, renewing sorry. of your mind, yeah. not the emptying." Yeah. So we're not supposed to remove everything from our, our minds so that it's just an empty shell that can be used and and taken captive by every mm. other thought no we are renewing it by god's word that we may be in a very clear direction towards the glory of god the will of god the kingdom of god mm-hmm. right so we ha- we there's a purpose yeah there's there's true purpose whereas with meditation buddhist meditation even yoga because yoga is a spiritual practice it and is. i think uh, a lot of christians Totally forget about it. The, yoga is not Pilates where you're just stretching and you're doing exercise. Mm. It is a spiritual practice. Now, if you want to do your stretches, and that's fine. That's all good. I, I stretch, you stretch before an exercise. But if you want to do yoga, that's a spiritual practice. Yeah. And the Hindus are very clear on that. It's literally, yoga literally means to be yoked. So you're yoking yourself to Hindu religion. You're yoking yourself to Eastern philosophy you're mm-hmm. yoking yourself to that meditative practice <clears throat> it helps you connect with the universe it helps you connect right. with um, universal consciousness yeah you know? and and that's why there's a danger here you're like there's no compatibility between christianity and these eastern religions so you have to make a choice here mm-hmm. now if you want to go and make a choice to to incorporate uh, to 
embrace Eastern religion, you're going to have to do that without Christianity. Yeah. Because they can't, they don't go into... They're not compatible. It's like, you know, when El Elijah talks to the people of Israel and says, <coughs> you're wavering between two opinions here. Right? Make a choice here, either Baal mm -hmm. or God. And and it's kind of like at one point you're like, why do you, why are you so invested in yoga and spiritual, Eastern spiritual practices, right? Um, rather than meditating on the Word of God, what what's the the desire of your heart here? Why are you so invested here? And it's a question that obviously we need to reflect upon our own selves with mm -hmm. anything, right? Like anything that that draws our attention away from God. Yeah. Um, but if you are being persuaded into a religious practice, I mean, imagine you went to a mosque and started praying five times a day. You can't really, that's not compatible with Christianity, is it? No. But we have Christians doing the equivalent in the Hindu or the Buddhist realm mm -hmm. by meditation and yoga. So it's not compatible here. No. And they deny fundamental tenets of the Christian faith. Uh, like, for example, Buddhism does not believe in God. There is no God. There's no, the universal there no, consciousness. There no there's the sea of cosmic, you know, karma and retribution. But there's no God, not the God that we know, not Yahweh. Um, same with Hinduism as well, right? They deny the dualistic um, approach and concept. Like we have in Christianity, heaven and hell. We have good and evil. They deny those. They deny. Well, them. I mean, even the Hindu gods, they're not even all powerful, no, all knowing. No, no. Because they're all they can't kind of, be. They're all connected. They're all technically under yeah. the same universal consciousness. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like you can't have thirty-three million omni omnipotent no gods. It doesn't. No. It doesn't. Because eventually they would kind of yeah. merge into some sort of yeah. And so this is yeah. I, I, I it'll think, be a problem. <laughs> yeah, I, I think this is something that in the book of Hosea he speaks about. Um, it says, my people are perishing because of a lack of knowledge. Now, mm -hmm. that was a specific context back in the days of Israel and whatnot. It's applicable. But it's applicable here because there are Christians who are just giving themselves over to Eastern philosophy without understanding the spiritual ramifications. Mm. They're like, they're not realizing it's drawing them away from the fundamental doctrines of the Christian faith. Yeah. Because obviously we know Buddhism and Hinduism is works-based. You have to work really hard to get out of samsara. You have to work really hard to end your suffering. You have to do it. Yeah, it's about there's, what you do. Yeah, there, there's, do. there's no vicarious sacrifice. Mm -hmm. No one can sacrifice themselves on your behalf. You have to do it. Yeah, absolutely. You have to do the work. That yeah. flies in the face of Christianity yeah. because we have the vicarious suffering of who? Jesus. Jesus. And he's taken our suffering away. He's taken our sin away. And so the incompatibility falls in the person of Jesus. Mm. The fact that Jesus has revealed himself shows us Buddhism doesn't work in this system. Hinduism doesn't work in this system. Um, Eastern spiritualities do not work in this system. They cannot. So you have to make a choice here. It's either I go full-blown Eastern or I decide to stick with Christ who says... Clearly, I am the way, the, the truth, truth, and the life. And the life. Amen. Yeah, really cool, man. Yeah, really, really appreciate your thoughts on that. And I think that I, I, I pray it's beneficial to those of you who are listening. Um, ultimately, you have to do your own research yeah. here. You have to pray. You have to meditate. You have to, and by meditate, I mean on the Word of God. <laughs> but you have to do your research. Come to Christ, and dwell on these things. Think about what it is you're trying to get out of these practices. If you're mm. doing yoga, if you're doing um, Eastern meditations, you have to think here, why am I doing this? Yeah. What am I, what's the purpose here? What's because if you want to come closer to God, that's not the way to do that. Mm. If you want to come closer to Christ, it's not the way to do that. If you want to end your suffering, Christ has the answer there. Yeah. So come to Christ. Right. God bless you guys and we'll see you next time. Take care.